today we are going to start Cassonity Weierstrass theorem, which is very very important. It states that if f z has an isolated essential singularity at z equal to z naught, f z comes arbitrarily close to every complex value in each dilated neighborhood of z naught. So what we are having? We are having a function f z and it has an isolated essential singularity, which means, what is isolated essential singularity? Which is neither a pole nor a removable singularity, right? And I need to prove that f z comes arbitrarily close to every complex value in the dilated neighborhood of z naught, right? Where the function is having isolated essential singularity. So let's prove. We have to claim that suppose a I have taken small a to be any complex number, then for every epsilon positive there exists delta positive such that mod fz minus a less than epsilon. Why mod fz minus a? Because I need to prove that this fz comes arbitrarily close to every complex value. And that complex value I have taken to be a. So their difference should be as small as possible, right? So their mod is taken to be strictly less than epsilon for all z in the disk z minus z naught mod less than delta. Clear? Uh, all right. This we have to claim. And if possible, suppose for some complex number a, they are talking about all the complex number for every complex value. But we say that if possible, suppose for some complex value A or complex number A, we have this mod Fz minus A is greater than equal to epsilon for all Z in the disk Z minus Z node mod less than delta. Right? Then uh, let's take Gz to be equal to 1 over this fz minus a, all right, which is because this mod fz minus a is greater than or equal to epsilon, so its reciprocal will be less than or equal to epsilon, right? Wait, we need to take the mod first, sorry. Now, if I suppose let gz is equal to 1 over fz minus a, Let's take their mod first, 1 over mod f of z minus a. Now this, because mod of fz minus a is greater than or equal to epsilon, so its reciprocal 1 over mod fz minus a will be less than epsilon. 1 over epsilon. Right? 4. 0 less than z minus z naught less than delta. Now this mod of gz is less than equal to 1 over epsilon which means this function is bounded. Now we take the use of Riemann theorem. Then by Riemann theorem whenever we are having the bounded function in some dilated neighborhood of z naught by Riemann theorem that function has a removable singularity at z equal to z naught. Now, removable singularity means the principal path is not there, right? Only the regular path is there. So, we take gz to be equal to, we are having this gz as 1 over f of z minus a and we take only the regular path, right? So, we write gz is equal to 1 over fz minus a which can also be written as a0 plus a1 z minus z naught up to so on skipping the principal part so therefore if i take the limit z tending to z naught to 1 over fz minus a then this will be equal to c 1 over fz minus a is a naught plus a1 z minus z naught if i take the limit z tends to z naught then right hand, side, uh, right hand side will become, this is A0 plus A1. Z tends to Z0, this will be 0. 
So accepting A naught, all the terms will be zero. So on taking limit z tends to z naught on one over f z minus A, this will be equal to A naught. That is only the first term, right? Therefore, limit z tends to z naught. This is a take the reciprocal f z minus A. This will be equal to one over A naught. Very good. If this A naught should be non-zero. And this is equal to infinity if this A naught is zero. Right? Which implies take this small a to the other side. Limit z tends to z naught f z is equal to a plus one over a naught if a naught is non-zero and is equal to infinity if a naught is zero, which means either f z is having removable singularity or it is having a pole because for pole limit is infinity for removable singularity limit is finite it is existing so here a plus 1 over a naught this limit is existing and on the other way this is infinite that means this function fz it is having a removable singularity or a pole that means Either fz has removable singularity at z0 if a0 is non-zero or fz has a pole at z0 if a0 equal to zero, which means fz has not isolated essential singularity, right? Because isolated essential singularity means it is neither a pole nor a removable singularity. But here they are saying fz has removable singularity or a pole at z equal to z0. So therefore, fz has not isolated essential singularity at z0. Thus, that means our contradiction is wrong. So if A is belonging to complex number, then for every epsilon positive, there, is delta pos there exists delta positive such that this mod fz minus A must be less than epsilon for all z in disk z minus z0 mod less than delta. And mod fz minus a less than epsilon means fz is tending to a. Right? But epsilon was arbitrary. Hence, fz comes arbitrarily close to every complex value in each deleted neighborhood of z0. And that complex value we have taken to be a. Easy. Very easy proof. Uh, let's do its corollary now, which is having the same steps as in this proof. Just a little difference. Suppose fz has an isolated essential singularity at z equal to z0. Given any complex number a, there exists a sequence zn. Now you are not having the point z, you are having the sequence zn such that f of zn is tending to that complex number as zn tends to z0. So proof. We choose a sequence delta n for which delta n is positive, obviously, for each value of n and limit n tends to infinity delta n is equal to 0. We take such delta n sequence, the sequence delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, so on, and this 1, 2, 3, this is your n, right? And for each this n, this delta n is positive. That means all the terms are positive. So your delta n sequence is positive. We have to claim that mod of fz minus a is less than 1 over n. We can choose any epsilon and I have taken here epsilon as 1 over n for zn minus z0 mod less than delta n for all n. Right? This we need to claim. And now again we have to uh, take the other way and get the contradiction. If possible, suppose for some n we have mod of f of z n minus a to be greater than or equal to 1 by n for this disk, right? And we again write let g of z n to be equal to, yes, 1 over f of z n minus a. Now the same steps. Take their mod. This will be 1 over mod f of z n minus a. Because this mod is f of zn minus a mod is greater than or equal to 1 over n, its reciprocal will be less than or equal to 1, less than or equal to n. Very good. So this is less than or equal to n. Reciprocal. 
for 0 less than Zn minus Z0 less than delta n. This is must to write. Now, because now mod of gzn is less than equal to n, that means this function is bounded. And whenever the function is bounded, we take the help of Riemann theorem. So then by Riemann theorem, gz has a removable singularity. Whenever the function is bounded in some dilated neighborhood of z0, then that function has a removable singularity at z equal to z0. And removable singularity means principal part is 0. We do not take the principal part. So we take g of zn to be equal to, which is f of zn minus a. This is equal to, we write only the regular part, z minus z naught, so on. And then we take the limit z tends to z naught on both the sides. So this limit 1 over f of zn minus a will be equal to yes. Only the first term because rest of the terms will be 0 as z is tending to z0. Which implies limit zn tends to z0 f of zn minus a take the reciprocal. This will be equal to 1 over a0 if a0 is non-zero and is equal to infinity if a0 is 0. Now take this small a to the other side. So limit zn tends to z0 f of zn is equal to a plus 1 over a naught if a naught is non-zero and is equal to infinity if a naught is equal to zero. Sorry. So therefore, uh, this implies either f of z naught has a removable singularity at z naught if a naught is non-zero or f of z naught has a pole at z naught if a naught is equal to zero because for the pole limit is infinity. So fz has not isolated essential singularity at z0, right, which is a contradiction. So our supposition was wrong. Thus, mod of f of zn minus a should be strictly less than 1 over n for this disk, which implies f of zn is tending to a as zn is tending to z0. All right, here ends up the proof. Just go through the, all the steps of the proof. This is very easy and this theorem is very, very important, right? All right. Thank you, guys. We meet in the next video. Goodbye.